Welcome to ALTV's Israel Daily. I'm Amit Harari and coming up in today's newscast. The State of Israel is awaiting Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's announcement with a subject halting the judicial overall. Meantime, Prime Minister Netanyahu firing Defense Minister Yoav Gallant. What's the political and military significance? And later, one of Israel's most famous musicians is refusing to accept prestigious Israel Prize amid concern for Israel's future. After a night of spontaneous mass protests around the country that continue today, Prime Minister Netanyahu is expected but not certain to make an announcement at any time halting the judicial overall. The expected announcement would follow a general strike by the Stadrut Labor Union called a general strike shutting down much of the nation. Now to be Steve Leibovitch reports. Pressure has been building on Prime Minister Netanyahu to change course since his firing of Defense Minister Gallant last night, sparking mass spontaneous protests around the country. The protests were followed by another plea from President Herzog calling on the coalition to stop the legislation of the judicial reform today. The expected change in course also came shortly after the Knesset Law Committee completed its approval of the Central Judicial Appointments Bill for its final vote in Knesset. As the spontaneous protests were still underway, Simcha Rotman convened the committee to finalize the core legislation that would give the coalition control of choosing Israel's judges. The bill was scheduled to be presented for its final readings today in the Knesset plenum. In effect, even if the vote is not taken, the coalition can now move to pass it at any time. Opponents of the overhaul have drawn a line in the sand on the Judicial Appointments Bill, saying it will politicize the court, remove key checks on government power, and cause harm to Israel's democratic character. In another development, a Knesset committee finalized legislation ahead of its final Knesset reading that would bar the High Court from preventing ministerial appointments, enabling Arya Deri, head of the ultra-Orthodox Shas party, to return to the cabinet. To break it all down, we're now joined by our panel, Executive Director at Honest Reporting and former Jerusalem Post political analyst Gil Hoffman. And here in studio is founder and CEO of the Israel Innovation Fund, Adam Belos. Hi, guys. Good to have you with us. Now, let's unravel the mess and make things a little more clear. Adam, we'll start with you. The Stadrut is on a strike. Airport is shut down. Malls, pretty much the whole of Israel. Lots of people on the streets. What's the impact? The impact is gigantic. We've never had a general strike here like this in Israel, especially grounding off flights out of Ben Gurion. So to say historic at the very least would, would probably be the correct answer. Also, thank you for having me today, and it's great to be here with you, Gail. We're happy to. Now, Pleasure. Gil Netanyahu got some backing from a few Likud ministers and Shas leader Arya Deri to the notion of halting the overall. Why is he still hesitating? I'd like to think that by the time this airs, uh, Netanyahu will have already announced uh, that he's backing off from uh, any legislation passing before the Knesset leaves for its recess. And uh, then during that break, they're going to have time to negotiate under the auspices of the president uh, to bring about a consensus uh, in the legal reforms worked out together between the coalition and the opposition and uh, the fighting internally inside Israel that there's been for the last three months will be over. And do you expect that Justice Minister Yariv Levin will now resign? He's already said that he's not going to resign and that he's going to accept any decision made by the prime minister and the Likud faction. Look, uh, they lost. Uh, the uh, protests were successful especially the protests of uh, the Air Force pilots who genuinely warned uh, that with Iran moving full speed ahead to get nuclear weapons, that uh, they won't be training to get ready for Israel to be prepared. And uh, that made the defense minister make his move. And uh, that's what ended up uh, winning in this deep, fierce fight that's been going on for so long. But still, do you see really a halt or just like sort of like a break? Look, when they come back uh, from the recess, 
they're not going to agree on everything again. And, and uh, But uh, there will be key issues in which they'll have enough time to reach a compromise. Uh, but for now, we can enjoy the Passover holiday and the Israel's Independence Day as brothers and uh, put down our, our swords for a little bit. Adam, now, where do we go from here politically? Is the coalition still intact? What's happening? So there's a... Uh... There's been some talk that Ben Gvir might actually leave the coalition. According to Ben Gvir's team, the, those allegations are false. But at the same time, they did confirm that uh, Ben Gvir is meeting with Netanyahu at this time. So I don't know what that means. I know that there was some talk about wanting to some of the more extreme right wing factions of the coalition leaving over Netanyahu, stepping back from this this uh, political reform and overhaul, which clearly needs to happen because it was not sold to the people properly. Uh, but in terms of what needs to happen, um, I really think there are two bad actors in this whole thing. Uh, I think that's Yair Lapid and I think that's Benjamin Netanyahu. And uh, I, I, I think everybody knows that's ever seen me on this program before. I'm quite a fan of Benjamin Netanyahu. I, I've studied him like he's a hero of mine. But the rhetoric and the language that has come out of both his government and from Mr. Lapid, I think, has has taken the political extremism to an extreme that it, it hasn't been in Israel since the Rabin assassination. I think that it's, um, you know, I, I was on the phone today confirming a group for a winery, OK, later next month. And instead of actually getting to speak about it, the only thing the person could talk about on the other end was how they're so worried about the future of the country. And I said, you know, um, if you look at the 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 challenges that we've had over the last 75 years, you know, we, we won the War of Independence. We won the Six Day War. We were able to repel, um, you know, the October Yom Kippur War uh, and win. But people are very concerned about what this means for the Israeli people and how we have never been so divided before. And our politicians are seeming to fail us in terms of doing the one thing that a good politician should be able to do, but which try, is unite the people. Adam, try taking me, taking us into the head of Benjamin Netanyahu. What is he thinking right now? What does he want really for himself? So I don't think, I don't think the prime minister ever thought it would get to where it's gotten. I also don't think that anyone would have thought that Lapid would deny sitting down with Netanyahu as many times as he did. And it went back and forth, you know, like a ping pong ball. But I do remember in the very beginning, that was an overture that was made by BB. Also, I think the way the coalition rejected Herzog's proposal, it was a little too quick. And I think that led to it. But I, I think BB is, is thinking about one thing right now. How do I fix what's been done to my legacy? OK, he came into office saying he was going to do a certain number of things that if you actually look at the list of things, one was make peace with Saudi Arabia. The other was this judicial reform. There were a few other things that he discussed, also sovereignty, Jordan Valley. And uh, these were all things that for Israel's security and future need to be hammered out. So he's going back to the drawing board right now and thinking about how do I keep my coalition together? How do I keep the people of Israel together and the Jewish people together because this was such a divisive thing. And let me put it this way. In short, Bibi has a lot to think about over Passover. And if there's any holiday that was perfect for these types of things to be thought over, it's that holiday. All of our politicians have something to think about and how they want to enter the next half of the of the year. Talking about Passover, we really have every day seems like full of political uh, bombshells. Gil, what might still await us just right before Passover? So first of all, just keep in mind, only one bill has passed out of the entire legal reform, uh, which is the bill that uh, prevents Netanyahu from de being deemed incapacitated. Um, and that, shoot, uh, that is uh, something that uh, really enabled Netanyahu to proceed in trying to end this conflict uh, without uh, being prevented legally uh, from his uh, conflict of interest agreement getting in the way. So. Uh, Right now, there don't seem to be uh, any bills that are still going to be a big fight between now and when the Knesset leaves for its recess. And uh, so they don't have that deadline 
of uh, trying to pass something before the recess hanging over their heads. And uh, that'll allow things to pass uh, without uh, stress. Uh, sometimes people do better work when they don't have a deadline hanging over their heads.